So my name is Anne Rudeau. I'm a lecturer at the Bristol Interaction Group. And I want to uh, start this talk with a little game, sort of uh, shaking everybody up. So it's really simple, so I, I, I want you to sort of participate, don't be afraid. So basically what's, what's going to happen is that I'm going to show you a piece of text. And your goal is to raise your hand up in the air when you find the word respect. Did you get it? Ready? Go. Come on, come on. <laughs> well, some of you are not playing. So it's, it's actually quite sparse. Okay, let's complexify a little bit more. So now, okay, obviously, Evan, you, you all find it. Okay, second example. Now I want you to find the word vocal. And the same, you raise your, head, your hand up in the air. You ready? Go. Not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's roughly similar than the last ones. Maybe some of you have started from the bottom. Um, okay. Last example is uh, obviously you find it. Sorry. Uh, last example is slightly even more complex. This time you have to find the word nature, and I'm going to give you a clue. There is at least three times the word nature in the next one. Okay. You ready? Go. I see one hand, two, three, okay, okay, I'm going to stop the, the nightmare, okay. Uh, so here, like, and especially like some who are really far away, like you probably can't see anything. Uh, so, yeah, it was a little bit mean, that, that was on purpose. Um, so basically with this example, I wanted to show you and make you appreciate how hard it is to actually read something on a, tech, a piece of text which is not on a, a square, a rectangular shape like we, we used to, to read. So maybe you actually struggle with um, the orientation. Uh, you have, might have to turn your head to read some of, of, of the part of the text. Um, you might have struggle with the fact that there are columns or, ho or holes. So it's kind of like a little bit uh, weird, like you start reading in some part here, and where do I have to go? Do I have to go down? Do I have to jump the hole? It's sort of like a little bit weird. And you might have trouble with the size as well, different font size. And obviously, like some other factors, some of you like really on the back probably can't see anything. So. Um, it leads us quite well to the research question that we investigated in this work, which is how to display text on shapes that are non-rectangular. Uh, but maybe before actually answering this question, I want to first answer the why. Why are, on earth are we interested in that? Well, the reality is that uh, in terms of technology, we are moving toward a new trend, which is um, uh, manufacturer and industry are building uh, displays that are non-rectangular anymore. So we can see, for example, Sharp, which is creating in 2015 the freeform display. So display which can be of any shape, um, square, um, well, square obviously, uh, disc or triangle, anything we want. Uh, so this is another example of a, a disc display. Uh, in 2014, so already LG produced their POLED display, which are non-rectangular, and already in 2008, there was already uh, a, a initial uh, technology on, on freeform display. So uh, obviously, there is a lot of things that are happening in, is happening in the industry as well in the research world to go to this new trend of creating displays that are non-rectangular. So in terms of hardware, we are relatively on track toward this new resolution. In terms of content, however, we are really quite behind. So if you think about it, graphical user interfaces are rectangular. They have been rectangular since probably like you can remember. So it's actually quite funny because in the history of human display, we have seen a lot of different things like through different culture. For example, um, texts or pictures on vase, on desk or columns uh, with cultures like e Egyptian or Sumerian. So what happened that turned everything into a rectangle? Well, at the end of the 19th century, basically, uh, this guy created the first movie. And how it worked is that it, it created the first perforated strip that we probably all know. And they were rectangular for technical reasons. And then the trend started. So it's actually quite funny because the first TV 
they were rectangular, although they were based on a technology that would have been better, easier to display in a circle. So it was like based on cathode ray tube. And uh, it's a sort of like shooting an electron beam, so you would have actually be better to shoot in a circle. But because they had to fit the, the strip of the movie, they put like a rectangular frameage around. And 136 years later, today, we are still following this trend of rectular, rectangular interfaces on regular, rectangular devices. So uh, this is why we actually wonder what's going to happen to graphical user interface when we are going to move to this uh, new free form display. And the first question we wanted to investigate, which is, okay, what's happening for text, which is maybe the most es essential thing that we, we do on a display. So to answer this question, we actually um, conduct like a, a multi-part study to answer several sub-questions. The first one, which is which shapes are we interested to study? The second sub-question is how to map text on these different shapes? And the third one, which is, okay, how these different mappings and shapes affect readability? So I'm going to go like now, like uh, one by one. So which shapes? So obviously, like, if we think about shape, there is like a million of possible shapes we can study. I mean, this is a very high dimensional space. So we start to think about, okay, what, what, what are we going to take? So we can say, okay, let's take the polygon. Or why not taking the curvilinear shape? Or why not the fractal? So there is a lot of possible things you can think about to study in an empir empirical way. Uh, and actually, all those sets are potentially interesting to study. So our approach was a little bit different in the sense that we uh, conduce some focus group where we ask some participants to generate ideas of how freeform display would be used in the near future. And from these focus group, we basically generated and collected shapes that we would use for a user study. So we had some very fun examples. For example, the uh, using um, text on the back of road signs. So road signs have a lot of different, different shapes. Uh, we have this very cool example that I actually would quite like to have in some point, which is like having the recipe displayed on the, on the hub of the kitchen, uh, uh, display on mirrors, and we also have some uh, fun example of having a display on jigsaw puzzles. So once we had this uh, bug, <laughs> sorry, not planned. Okay, so once we had this uh, set of shape, uh, the next question um, that we wonder is how we're going to map text onto this shape. So if we come back to the original text that, we, uh, that I presented you at the beginning, so we can think about, okay, we have this text which is like in a rectangle, how are we going to map it to something that is like a circle? So there's a different way of doing it. We can think about, okay, let's just map it like, you know, uh, as it is, as soon as yeah, there is no more room, you return to the line and, it, and that's it. Another way to do it would be, you know, okay, let's keep the rectilinear aspect and just use some columns, as you can see, for example, in newspapers. A third way would be, okay, let's change the size of the text. And this ex uh, example is actually quite interesting because you would see actually that each line correspond to the new line in the circle. So we just shrink the size of the line. So we thought it would be, for example, interesting if the, if the content is scrollable so that it would just avoid the, the text to ju jump heretically between lines when you scroll. And finally, the, another way of doing it would be to go really away from the linear aspect and to think about really like um, look at the curvature and have the text that is really following the curvature in a maybe more artistic way. So this example actually defined the framework which we come with, which are three axes. The first axis is the layout, which can be by block in this case, or continuous in the three others. Uh, we have the token size, which can be variable or constant in the three other of the case. And finally, the line alignment, which can be tangential in this case and uh, uh, linear in the others. And obviously, these uh, also can be combined in much more different way. For example, tangential with variable size, with a, a, a by block uh, the, um, layout. So once we had that, uh, the next question in line, which is, okay, which is the most readable? Which is, which is the best to use if we want someone to read something properly? So we start to think about like, okay, what do we think 
to predict how this would perform. So our first intuition, for example, was that, okay, these two ones should be quite good because we are quite used to have this, this uh, layout. And maybe the two other ones are, are a bit different, so they would not perform as good. And we thought as well, for example, this one, as I said before, they would perform quite well if the, the content is scrollable. Sorry. So um, we thought of all this. We actually also read a lot of the literature like uh, on readability, and we came up with 10 hypotheses on how different mapping would perform on different shapes. So I'm not going to present them all there to not bore you to death. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a little bit like uh, uh, later on. So obviously the next steps, once we have those hypotheses, would be to uh, do some control experiment to invalidate or validate those hypotheses. So to sort of give you a bit of a feeling of what we did during this experiment, I want to do another little game. So, okay, so I'm going to do a little bit the same that earlier. So I'm going to show you a text. But this time, you don't have to find a, a specific word. This time, you have to find a word that quite doesn't match the story. Something that seems to be out of place, doesn't, doesn't make sense, right? So you have to count how much, how many of this word there is, and as soon as you have a number, you raise your, your hand up in the air. Is that right? Okay, go. Come on, come on. It's better, more and more people. Okay, so I think you, you have quite, quite a lot to have, have them. Okay, so um, there were some like really weird like uh, animals. I'm pretty sure like most of you actually found, find them in, um, in this. So I'm not gonna actually ask you if you did well because now I wanna ask the real question. What was the story about? So who actually remember what you just read? <laughs> yeah, I mean like, uh, it, w it was actually like, you, you probably remember the salesman and the flamingo and stuff. Okay, now remember 10 minutes ago, the first game. Before the dark water, before the duck, the first game we did together. Who actually remember what what was about? Oh, I have one person. Oh, brilliant. Can we talk after? <laughs> so, okay, so most of you don't actually remember, obviously, because it was 10 minutes ago, but also because um, it makes an essential difference between the two tasks you actually perform in these two games. So in the first ever game, you did a visual search. So you had like a word you've, you had to find in the text. So you don't actually have to comprehend what you were reading. But in the, t the game we just did, you had to think, you had to read and think about what you're reading. You had to essentially comprehend what you are reading. And this is the, the main difference. So this is why we actually use this task to, uh, uh, for experiments, to comprehension, to actually force the people to read. So this is our setup. So as you can see, it's like on a conventional desktop. We were not especially interested in the user manipulating the display or any uh, perspective. So we just like wanted to have a, a pure perception reading uh, study. And here are some of the results we found. So for example, we knew that from uh, literature, uh, longer lines correlate with better readability. So we could hypothesis that, okay, continuous layout should be better than broken layout just because there is longer lines overall. But we thought it might not especially be true, for example, if there are holes in the middle of the shape because it's completely disrupt the layout. So we, we performed this study and we actually uh, invalidate the first hypothesis in terms of subjective dif difficulty. And we validated the second hypothesis in terms of time, it takes for the user to read, and in terms of subjective difficulty. So here is another example. So we knew that larger letter have obviously a larger retinal image on the eye. So we thought that, okay, constant size should perform better than variable size just because we don't have to have this adaptation of the different size. But again, like we thought like when there is scrollable content, it might not be true because this variable size can help the word jumping, per okay, I mean, uh, erratically between uh, the shape. And we actually find the, that we do not find any conclusive result for the first hypothesis, but we validated the second one in terms of time and subjective difficulty. 
So this is a sort of like just a little bit of an overview of, of how we did and what, what we found. And I really hope that at this time, like I interest you enough so that you can go in our paper and learn about more about the different uh, hypotheses we had and the different, different results we had. And also, especially, we extracted a lot of guidelines. So how did you display text on non recurring display? So um, just uh, before finishing, I just want to say that basically in here we investigated how to display text on non-rectangular uh, shape, but there is a lot more question we want to investigate. For example, what's happening with other content like map and, and image? What's going on with interaction, for example, when we actually manipulate the display? And uh, also what about 3D shapes? So we really focus on 2D, but what's happening when we have spherical and cylindrical things? Uh, so that's it. Um, I just want to uh, finish by thanking my co-author, which are in the room, Marco Serrano and Pouran Guirani, which have been really um, um, great to work with during this work. Just uh, one question and a comment. Have you controlled for curvature defects, stigmatism? Because that affects linear reading a lot. I mean, people who have strong stigmatism tend to um, have difficulty. I, I, Marcos would actually know better, but like uh, we didn't. No, we did not investigate yeah. this. this uh, that uh, only thing. thing I would look. Because yeah. a lot of people have those kinds of defects, and they have yeah. a hard difficulty. And another. Th I was looking to your, say, what about comic books? Comic mm -hmm. books, people are used to jump. And also, maybe you have to control for people who read comic books yeah, because yeah. they're used to, to move around. Especially Asterix. It, it's France. actually really interesting because now we are like actually continuing this work, and then that actually might be interesting for the study we want to do next. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we're, we would be interested in like more like, um, um, yeah, s like more vis visual search type yeah. of thing. So, yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, if you have a question, why don't you? I'll, I'll wait till the end. Unfortunately, the microphone is in the center. I can ask you later. Sorry. Hey, hello. Uh, my name is Ali. That was a Nice work. Um, I was wondering if you have any thoughts about um, the uh, how, how visually it is pleasing the results and uh, respect to the fidelity to the shape and also uh, typography uh, considerations. For instance, kerning, uh, tracking, typeface. Mm -hmm. I, I don't expect you to answer all of these questions, but I'm wondering if you have thought about it or if you're going to continue on that. Well, I'd, I'd, I don't really know if I'm really going to answer your, your question, but I think like we, we thought about like how... So uh, actually maybe I have like um, uh, this slide as well. So uh, we, we came across this study which say that um, apparently... So, okay, that's a, a bit of a thing. So if you are a teacher, if you're teaching, you better use in your slide this second uh, typography because apparently it helps uh, students memorize better uh, the content of the lecture. Um, and um, oppositely, if you use like a more like a, a, a simple typography, it's sort of like more uh, dive into the intuitive part of, of the people. So you, you just read and you don't really think about what you're reading. So I think like we, we thought about a way in a way that like maybe there is some shape where it's actually harder to read, but it could be actually interesting because it could help the user to focus on something like in a better way. If, if you know what I mean. So maybe the shape would actually be an, an, an another way of doing a different typography effect. Um, I don't know if it answers so, sort of that. Sure, you are uh, considering another task, which is actually mainly, uh, as I understand, memorizing or, un or remembering the, the, the text. But I was rather <laughs> asking about aesthetics and how visually <coughs> pleasing it could be, especially that in design practice, we see that how designers try yeah. to 
create uh, grids or sometimes break the grids, mm -hmm. convey a, a specific meaning? Or yeah. So, so in our study, we, we uh, also had some subjective um, um, uh, results. Um, but like obviously, like the aesthetic aesthetic of something is like something like I, I guess really hard to judge. So um, it's actually why, like in our following work, we actually also want to work with some designers because they have this intuition of what looks better, what doesn't look better. So sure. this is more, I guess like part of our following work. Or you could do crowdsourcing and see how people perform the yeah you know, that or how part they, of the they plan actually <laughs> how they rate different type of design and mm -hmm. probably you could come up with some measure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.